Hi, I'm Melissa Smith. I'm Spencer Ziegler, and welcome to Data Lit, a podcast for educators by educators. And today we have another episode of Data Bytes, where we interview Wake County staff on how they engage with data. And we're thrilled to be joined by Bonnie Sluder, uh, the Director of Routing and Systems in our Office of Transportation. Bonnie, thank you for joining us. Welcome, Bonnie. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so can you tell us just briefly uh, who you are, what you do in Wake? Okay, Bonnie Sluder. I've been in Wake County Transportation for about 11 years now. I have worked with school transportation at a local level and at a state level for almost 29 years now. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. 29 years. You like transportation for sure. Uh, Transport, my my blood must be school bus yellow. (laughs) (laughs) I like that. I like that. (laughs) So, yeah. So one of the questions we ask each person that kind of joins the podcast is, uh, what does data literacy mean to you? I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this. Yeah. After thinking about it, I think it's when you, you know, take the data that you get, you read, you review it, you analyze it, and then you communicate it back out to people. So I was thinking about that and how it related to me in transportation. And since I mostly work with routing and and some of our uh, technology on the buses, I started thinking about how we use the data that we receive in transportation. So what happens is we get student data from Oasis and PowerSchool every night. We put that data in our routing system, which we call TIMS, which is short for Transportation Information Management System. Okay. And then we upload that data every night, and it gives us, you know, students who have moved, who've changed schools, Mm -hmm. or are new to the system, or been deleted out. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that updates every night. Then the next morning when our routers come in, they go through all that data to see what data has changed for their areas. And then they use another piece of data that we get from ShareWell, which is our ticket system, And then they take those kids and they start assigning them to bus runs, Mm -hmm. you know, as they're requested to. Then I think the big part is when we communicate that back out, because we have several different areas to communicate to. We have to communicate out to parents. Right. We communicate out um, by posting on the Web page. Right. And then we have to communicate changes that we make to runs out to our different transportation districts so that they know what to give the bus drivers and and a date on when that starts. You use the word transportation districts, Mm -hmm. so that sounds, that's new. So we have transportation districts within the district? Within our district, (laughs) yes. yes. How do those relate to, we also divide our district into areas Areas, of schools? Mm -hmm. We have four different areas. Uh, We do a north, south, east, west. Simple. Yeah. Yeah. That was tracking so far. Right. And then within each of those areas, we have districts. Like we have an Apex District, Apex Friendship District, uh, Enloe District, Panther Creek District. And within each of those districts are a handful of schools that they service. Okay. I was going to ask if a district is a school because you said Enloe District and Enloe is a school, but the Enloe District could have other schools. In addition to Enloe? Oh, yes. 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 Several schools. Usually one high school, a few middle schools, several elementary schools. A couple of them have two high schools. Yeah, okay. Yeah, one of the things I like about your definition, I like how you think of data literacy in terms of, um, it's like inputs and outputs, Mm -hmm. like what data you're you're kind of digesting. But then that important piece, I think too often we we lose, just that, that how do you communicate it out? to the yeah. relevant stakeholders. And that's key as much to you as for teachers or principals or central office employees like us. Yeah, I think what was interesting to uh, most of the time, the, the, the data that we think about is student learning data, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. grades and, and that sort of thing. And so to hear about, you know, I'm trying to, in my head, I'm a visual person, trying to imagine, you know, you, t- you spoke about bus routes and it's mm-hmm. like, so is that like a whole bunch of addresses and mm-hmm. bus numbers and, I was just like, okay, her data is going to look very, very different from the data that we typically interact with. Because, again, it has addresses and who's moved and who's not moved and, yeah. you know, what those labels might look like. Yeah, it makes me think of um, when we had our interview about geospatial mapping, you know, yes. thinking about location when we're looking at data. It also makes me think of um, season two or so. We did uh, data types and multiple measures. Yes. And how one of the things we talked about is just we could probably do a better job collecting and communicating data on our systems 
our processes and how they work. And so it, it's it's wonderful to hear you talk about you know uh, digesting and communicating the you know that type of data. It's also a little bit overwhelming to think of the person who has to collect that, right? Because yeah. our transportation data looks very different, and there's somebody up there, I guess, in senior management <laughs> who has to look at that in addition to like your nutrition data and in addition to your student learning data, in addition to your hiring data. I mean, just just so much data. It's just like, how do you keep your eye on all of them? Because mm. you you technically can't let one of them drop. So how do you yeah. how do you keep your eye on all of them? So it does seem very overwhelming, but it is so fascinating that data is just so different depending on the department that we uh, interact with. Mm. And so interrelated too, because data that we're looking at for transportation or nutrition or something, that's going to impact the student learning data. So we got to be looking at all them in order to reach and teach our kids. Right. Agreed. All right, so Bonnie, what, you kind of gave us a little bit of this, what are some of the data that you interact with? So we talked about, I guess, addresses and, Mm -hmm. and movement and how do you track movement of folks? Yeah, we also work a lot with GIS data. Mm -hmm. Um, I mentioned the TIM system. So it's a a combination of text data, but also mapping data. Think about every time Wake County builds a new street or a new neighborhood development. So we have to go into our TIM system and we actually draw those streets in because when those students come in that nightly download I talked about, uh they have to get located somewhere on the map so that we can visually see where they live, you know, and then that way we're able to work to create their stops for, Mm -hmm. you know, take a group of kids in a subdivision and then figure out where the best place to make their stops are. And then we take their stops and then we make their bus run. So we do use a lot of GIS data. We also, with that GIS data, we post in TIMS what would be an estimated speed for a bus to travel. We can't use, yeah, we can't use posted speeds because we have to think about the bus traveling. Okay, so it has to calculate how long does it take for this bus to make this stop, this stop, and this stop. So it does a oh. lot of speeding up, a lot of slowing down. So the the, the, the mean, the average mm-hmm. speed, they right. might be on 35, but then if they're stopping and going to zero for five minutes, interesting. They may only average 18 or 20 miles an hour on a yes. on an area of a street. Yeah. yeah, we all know we've been behind a school bus. We've been behind a school bus and we're like, oh, mm-hmm. boy. <laughs> so we have to, to work with some different data, um, like our GPS data. We have GPS units on... All the school buses. No way. Yes. Oh, yeah, I guess I never thought about that. But, yes. yeah, so you. We have those. So we can review that to kind of get an idea of how long it takes a bus to get from point A to point B. Okay. And then we put that into our map in the TIM system. There are also places, and I'm sure you both can relate to when we're, you know, going out to eat dinner. There may be a really bad intersection that mm-hmm. you don't like to drive through and you're not going to turn left there, although it's perfectly legal to do so. Right. We also go in the map and we code these kind of things in oh. ways so it won't allow a bus to turn left at a certain place. And it will force it when it routes, when we put it all together, it'll force it to go a certain way. Do you sell that information? <laughs> <laughs> The software company does that. <laughs> like, this might be very handy to the rest of us. Drop that in the show. Yeah, yeah. But we input those kind of things um, into TIMS that helps us make safe bus routes. Right, right, right. Anywhere we don't want a student to cross over, you know, we wouldn't want a kid crossing over six lanes of six work yeah. truck. So we put those, we put codes into TIMS for those to, to keep those things from happening also. So we, yeah, we get a lot of data in order to do that. We already spoke about the mapping data, student data we get at night. And we also get data from ECATS, which is our special needs students that we, so we have to refer to that a lot. And then ShareWell, which is our ticket system. So when something goes wrong with a bus? Well, it could be that. It could be when a a parent just is new and wants transportation, they'll send a ticket in. And depending on what the ticket's for, it would get routed to different people in transportation. So that kind of data looks 
sounds like it's more like what we would deal with, like qualitative data, like when we do focus groups and stuff. Like, you know how you have to analyze qualitative yeah. data? That data sounds like a lot like yeah, similar. We, we track year to year how many new requests we get. You know, it could be if there's a safety issue, mm -hmm. it would come in. And so we're able to track using ShareWell, those kind of things. Okay. So when you're just... I think for any educator, anyone that works with schools, it's hard to sometimes like turn off, you know, that work-life balance. Yeah. When you're just driving around Wake County and you see like a giant housing <laughs> complex coming up or like a road, is there? Do you get hives? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some, sometimes when I, when I drive through and, and look at all of these townhouses and apartments, yeah, it does make me break out in a cold sweat every now and then. I can remember one time being in the middle of a new subdivision looking around and just as far as I could see, you know, houses and townhouses. And it, it can be overwhelming. So it was not abundantly clear to me. So that the bus would go up, loop around and come right back at the same spot. And I was just like, why are they doing that? The kids are right there. You're passing the kids to go around to get the kids. Mm -hmm. And then I had asked the driver and she said it's so that the kids could come when they when she stops on this side, the kids just walk in. If she picked them up on the other side, they would have had to cross. And I was just like, well, it, I mean, you know, it's not like a major road. And I was just like, okay, that seems. Mm. But, you know, even like those minor details where, you know, always putting children's safety. Yeah. I, I guess, you know, you don't always think about that when you have safety and efficiency. Because I'm like, well, they're wasting time driving all the way around to loop around to come. But again, safety, I could see in that case, safety is... Safety, is, or yeah. it, it could have been that they had to turn around because their next stop was yes, yeah, down yeah. the road somewhere else. Yeah, and we do try to route to where the kids are on the bus the least amount of time possible. Interesting. I know there have been, you know, complaints in the community. Oh, the kids are riding forever. And I just yes. like, I don't think anybody wants a kid to be just riding a bus because, you know, you just like to ride a bus. Yeah. So to know that, that that is a factor, like trying to make sure that they're on the bus for the least amount of time and they're trying to be safe while, you know, getting on the bus. Like all of those things are things that you have to factor in. Yeah. Yeah, it does make me appreciate and empathize just all that goes into this system that seems invisible like i suppose like your transportation is kind of like a a ref where like a ref or umpire you're not supposed to notice them right you know when they do a good job you didn't think about it just right it right. just worked but hopefully people can hear this and realize just all the data you're working with and all the considerations everything you need to do to make it just work and kids show up yeah So what is one fact about the data that you work with that you think our listeners might find interesting? I like to take our data and turn it into what I call fun facts. Yes. Um, you know, we talked about the amount of data that we use. Yeah. To me, it's, it's interesting to look at the amount of students, miles, hours we drive. I don't think people really realize how much it is. I mean, it's, it's very yeah. large. So, like, take a guess. How many students do you think we transport a day? Okay, we're on three, and we'll throw a number out. It's going to be weird for editing. But, okay, you ready? <laughs> um, per day. Per day. Yeah, okay. One, two, three, hundred and twenty thousand. You were supposed to do it at the same time. You're cheating. Now you're facing off of mine. Okay, whatever. What's okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I was thinking yeah. about 20,000. Go, go look. Oh, Okay. Well, we are really somewhere in the middle. <laughs> we're, we're transporting seven, a little over 72,000 kids right now. 72,000 so, 72,000. So if you, you picture Carter-Finley Stadium, everybody in this area is probably familiar with that stadium. Yeah. It holds 56,000 kids. Mm. So we could fill it up like one and a quarter times. Wow. In a day? In a day. Okay. Every day we're doing that. Every day we do that. Now, think about, I don't know if you guys have a commute to work every day, but I do. I drive I drive a little over an hour oh, every day. Not that long. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Makes my commute like, no, yeah. I don't have a commute. <laughs> so I know how many miles I drive a day, yeah. but how many miles oh. do you think our bus drivers drive a day? Total, all together. Oh, oh okay. So collective, every driver for that 70,000 kids... How many miles a day? 
a hundred a hundred thousand miles. And, you know, I'll take the I'll take the over then. You can say the over <laughs> under. Yeah. Go m- more than no, that. no, no. You're over. Oh, oh you're over. Oh, I'm over. Wrong then. You, I guess you win then. <laughs> okay, they go sixty-seven thousand nine hundred and fifty-two miles a day. Okay, about a mile per kid. I should have. Yeah. Who? Wow. So now, how long is that now? If I had to put that. So to picture that, uh huh, you would have to drive around the Earth. Not just across the United States, but around the earth almost three times. Okay. Wow. (laughs) This is what we're doing in a day? In a day. Mm. Yeah. Multiply that by 180 and you've got our year. Yeah. Yep. And how many complex turns and stops in those? Like, it's not just like it's a straight, you think of that in a very circuitous route, if you're going to kind of like lay that out. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the drivers drive... On, if I took everybody and averaged them together, it's right at seven hours a day mm. of driving. So, so then that definitely dispels that myth that bus drivers kind of have free time then during the day. They, that, yeah. That they, Staggered. No, because I've heard people say, well, well, why don't you let your bus drivers do, like, if you want to do they're something. They're going to 30 minutes in the morning and right, then 30 like minutes they in the afternoon. Right, they have a morning and then they just have an afternoon, but they have this whole day where they can maybe have another job. That, that, that's not as true now as it was in the past. Okay. Part of that is because we are a three-tier system. Yeah. Meaning? Meaning that we have high schools that start at 725 in the morning. Mm -hmm. So some of our bus drivers are up and driving at 435 o'clock in the morning. And then, you know, then the middle school, which is around 815, and then the elementary schools at 845. Same Same driver does a run for each tier. Oh, gosh. So and why, and sometimes yeah. and with our bus driver shortage and that's one thing we've we've not brought up yet. Yeah. Today is is we are very short on bus drivers. Mm-hmm. We could use, you know, 200 more bus drivers. Ooh. All right. So so yeah, we've talked about a lot of data that you're working with. To be honest, it was more than I I think I considered coming into this recording. Um, but what's some data that you don't currently have access to, but wish that you did? I thought about I thought about this, and um, ever since I started working here eleven years ago, I have wanted and I have fought for getting student scanners on the buses, mm. so that a student would have a badge or something on their phone or something hanging on their book bag mm-hmm. where they could scan on when they get on the bus scan off when they get off off the bus oh yeah so that we as a routing department can get an accurate count of the students on the bus which helps us in planning right now we rely on the drivers to help us with that and with the driver shortage that that becomes difficult because it's just one more thing we're asking them to do for us you know Confirm. They're not taking roll call, are right. they? Mm-hmm. Not so much. It's more they know who they pick up that after right. a while. Gotcha. They know the kids. They know their names. And they can go on a checkoff sheet for us and say, you know, yes, yeah. these kids ride, these kids don't. But I would like to have that as electronic data yeah. so that, one, we don't have to rely on them to do it. Because yeah. right now with the bus driver shortage, there's a lot of substitute drivers. Yeah. yeah. So... That, that's one thing I would really like to have, and I am very, very close to getting it. We have the software in place. Oh. Um, I'm just waiting and working with some vendors right now to try to find the right hardware and type of card or tag or Interesting. whatever. Yeah. yeah. That'd be fascinating, too. I mean, we could use that data academically. Like, what is the correlation between kids spending X minutes on this bus versus, you know, maybe outcomes, some of those kind of things. We can probably estimate it, but it's going to vary day to day. So I'd be, I think that'd be kind of neat. Yeah, maybe a safety positive for the parents also. Yeah. Because I believe the software will allow the parent to see, yes, my little Johnny's on the bus now, and yes, he's off, or yes, he's at home now. Yeah, So think of all of the, you know, you know, at the beginning of a school year when a, a child is new to the bus system and, you know, we always have something where somebody either fell asleep or they missed their stop yeah. or something like that, a way to sort of minimize, you know, some of those. Because, again, it's it's really hard 
for the bus driver to kind of keep track of everybody going on off and everything like that so i think that would that would be really really helpful and if there's a bus accident you know we would be able to see who's off the bus so how many right. do we have oh, to yeah. account for right oh, now yeah yeah yeah. And i've even thought about that as opposed yeah. to contacting everybody and yeah. they're like well my child's already home sorry yeah. sorry didn't mean scary yeah, yeah so yeah. I, that's one piece of data that i would really like to have and hopefully i'll have it amazing i also talked to my senior director and in trying to to think about data that we didn't have. He would like to know, as I've mentioned a couple of times, our driver shortage. Mm-hmm. So he would like to know why are the drivers leaving? You know, mm-hmm. we, we think we've got some pretty yep. good ideas from some drivers mm-hmm. that we have been able to talk to, but maybe trying to find a way as they leave some type of an exit interview. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah that that, that yeah. seems pretty yeah. easy to do. Yeah, we just finished up... Um, if you can find a, a series on street data, and that makes yeah. me think of like the street data for our drivers. We can kind of figure out what are their lived experiences so that we can enhance that and yeah, improve. All right, well, thank you. I know so much more about transportation than I did uh, before, so I appreciate you coming on and, and informing us on this. Thank you, Bonnie. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, now I'm going to use my facts now to wow other people when I go out. Yeah, just pretend <laughs> that you just had that in your, yeah. Um, and thank you to Rollsville Middle School's Jamal Wellman for the theme music. And thank you to our listeners, to y'all, for uh, making this show possible. Um, if you want to learn more about any of these topics or you want to contact us, you can do so at www.wcpss.net slash datalit. And thanks for tuning in. Bye.